why South Australians will need to find a new meeting place for a while. This is Adelaide's National Mind News with Georgina McGuinness. Good evening. The state government stands accused of being caught out tonight by a change to daylight saving interstate that threatens to cause disruption here. The eastern states will move their clocks before us, creating a 90-minute time difference. The government says it will now consult the business community, farmers and others before deciding whether we'll join the shift. Business leaders are furious over the inconvenience that the change will cause. And sun lovers are puzzled too. I think it's nice to be able to go outside and enjoy the sunshine as much as possible. I think it um, probably be a bit silly to be different. People won't pay out in Adelaide as much. They won't say we're behind the times. For three weeks in October, South Australia will be 90 minutes behind Victoria, New South Wales and the ACT. At last week's COAG meeting, those states agreed to line up with Tasmania's early start to daylight saving. The opposition claims the RAND government was caught on the hop. Why did they go off to COAG and not... Uh, have a prepared plan on this. They knew it was on the agenda. We're not simply going to follow suit because the Eastern Seaboard has done it. On Friday, the Premier's department ruled out any chance of going along with the change this summer. But now, it seems, the door might be open. If there is to be a change, there may well be some merit to that. But of course, people need to make their case. We will consult with the uh, community and see what the community wants out of daylight saving. The business community has urged the state government to even go a step further eliminating the usual half-hour time difference with the eastern states. It is a question that the state government needs to face up to. And it will also need to face up to a virtual repeat of October's dilemma when South Australia finishes daylight saving two weeks earlier than the eastern states in March. Chris Salter, National 9 News. Victoria's health department chief has been sacked over a food poisoning outbreak that killed four residents in a nursing home. Robert Hall, who once held a similar position here in South Australia, received his marching orders amid fears that the outbreak is spreading. Another day and more drama at the Broughton Hall aged care facility. A food poisoning outbreak that may have led to four deaths, forcing another two residents to hospital. The first an elderly man whose family demanded urgent action. He has deteriorated dr dramatically over a couple of weeks since we've seen him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he should have been in hospital right earlier. Half an hour later, a woman was taken from the nursing home. Both patients were suffering the effects of gastroenteritis. Very bad, it is very bad. Disinfecting the facility has allowed families to resume visits. In total, 21 residents have been affected. While the outbreak appears to be under control, management has accepted full responsibility. We recognise that we should have made further attempts to contact the emergency number. Uh, the department, as I said, are not to blame for not having the information. The health minister was in the dark until yesterday, but she's responded swiftly. I have lost confidence in the chief health officer and uh, his position will be terminated as of today. While tests have confirmed one patient still recovering in hospital has contracted salmonella poisoning, Autopsies will reveal how the four residents died. Clint Stanaway, National 9 News. A smoke alarm and some quick-thinking neighbours have saved the life of an elderly man at Woodville Park. Fire broke out inside his Windsor Avenue home just after 6.30. After hearing the alarm, he tried to put out the flames, but he was overcome by smoke. Neighbours dialed triple O and helped the man to get out. He was taken to hospital suffering smoke inhalation, and the fire is not considered suspicious. After 30 years of taking pride of place in the heart of our city, the mall's balls have been bounced out. It means thousands of us will have to find a new meeting place, but thankfully not for long. They'll be back after a good spit and polish. They're synonymous with Rundle Mall, a popular meeting place and an icon of Adelaide. So it was no wonder a few heads turned as the mall's balls were removed from their famous position. No work in town. And I thought, oh my God, they're taking them away. It's Adelaide. That's what makes Adelaide is the balls. It's a bit sad to see them not in the mall at the moment. Yeah, but I hear they're coming back, so that's good news. Back after a long overdue makeover. And the small dents will be pulled out. The stainless steel will be built up in a couple of places. And they'll get rid of all of those little scratches and chewy stains. Years of love and attention from locals and tourists alike had left the icon worse for wear. Around the world, they've become a symbol of Adelaide. And, and we're just keen that they're absolutely at their best. I shine them up and um, bring them back. <laughs> it's the first time the two-ton sculpture has been moved since 1990. 
the, the balls did get a bit wobbly 17 years ago and we had to do some work on them. It will take around eight weeks for the balls to be fully refurbished and reinstalled. But until then, the fountain might just become Rundle Mall's new meeting place. Kate Collins, National 9 News. And the state government has urged small shops to voluntarily remain closed before midday on Anzac Day. The government says the move would be a gesture of respect for diggers who will stage their annual march on Wednesday week. Large stores are compelled to close on Anzac morning, even those that are normally exempt from restrictions. They include hardware, carpet and furniture stores. A 13-year-old girl has been severely mauled by a sea lion north of Perth. Ella Murphy suffered a broken jaw and deep wounds to her chin when the animal attacked her while she was on her surfboard. Experts say it was a freak incident, but warn that sea lions can be aggressive if they're provoked. It's a pretty big animal. If they're in their breeding season, you go into their territory, then sure, they can get aggressive, they'll defend themselves. Wildlife officers hope to remove the animal from the area, but they're unlikely to kill it as it is a protected species. Jetstar is under fire for leaving 300 Australian travellers stranded at Honolulu Airport for two days. The passengers claim the discount airline chose to wait until a technical problem was fixed instead of organising another plane to bring them home. Bargain flights to Hawaii. The catch? Expect delays. They will never fly Jetstar ever again. I mean, there was no one there to help us out. People were stuck there for three days. Jetstar was struggling to explain. We haven't had the best of weekends. At Honolulu Airport, passengers flying to Sydney and Melbourne were told there was a technical problem with their aircraft. Two days later, they were still waiting to board the plane. Not lazing on the beach, but in the airport lounge. They were just lying to us. They weren't giving, giving us any information at all. Not once have we seen a Jetstar representative until we arrived here today. I've noted some criticism that we didn't keep customers informed. Uh, we reject that on the basis that they were given regular updates. When the fuel gauge of the aircraft was eventually fixed and the 300 stranded holidaymakers finally made it home, Jetstar delayed passengers again. We don't know where our bags are, we don't know what was wrong with the plane, we just got kept waiting and waiting and waiting. We think we've done a pretty good job considering the difficult circumstances. The budget airline says this is the first significant delay to any of its international flights. And 14 million passengers have been happy to fly with Jetstar. But we think people will continue to fly with us. Bethany Jensen, National 9 News. The party could soon be over for Australian wine lovers who've been cashing in on the current oversupply. Experts are predicting prices are set to jump, especially at the lower end of the market, largely due to the drought. Wine cheaper than bottled water, premium labels at bargain prices. Australian wine lovers have never had it so good. If you drink uh, 15 to 30 dollar wines in this country, you're drinking some of the best value wines in the world, some of the best wines in the world. Last year, non-labelled clean skins were selling for two dollars a bottle, thanks to a glut in wine production. I'll just take those three things. Just those. But a combination of the drought, frosts and bushfires has cut this year's vintage by 40 to 50 percent. And the industry says the days of heavy discounting are drawing to an end. It ought to stop pretty soon. Not so good for consumers, but a welcome relief for producers. Pricing has been at, at an unsustainable level. It's been at a level where growers and winemakers haven't been able to make a profit. It wasn't sustainable. We were going to see more and more people go to the, to the wall. So the advice from some experts is buy up now while the cheap prices last. And they warn it won't just be the lower end of the market that will feel the squeeze. Certainly, I reckon by next Christmas, a lot of the clean skins will start to dry up and we'll start to see some of the premium wines you know, get back to their real levels. Especially if, as some predict, next year's harvest is also hit by the drought. Time, perhaps, to consider an investment in the future. Go hard on the 2005 Reds if you want to put things away. That's the real tip. Brad Schmidt, National 9 News. Next in National 9 News, the joyride that ended in a fiery crash and the hero who saved a teenager's life. Plus, the royal romance gone wrong. Why is it over for William and Kate? No, you're not seeing things. On 60 Minutes, the wolf man. One over two. Yes, he's for real. 20 years eating, sleeping, living with the pack. You do have to have an element of craziness. 
also. <laughs> Kevin Rudd, Liz Hayes, and a few home truths. How do you take the Mickey out of me? Let me count away. <laughs> Toyota presents 60 Minutes tonight. What if the air was clean again? Would the grass be greener? Would you live longer? Feel better? What if all cars were like the Prius? With hybrid synergy drive technology that reduces greenhouse gases by one tonne per year. Hybrid synergy drive by Toyota. LG's new DVR TVs allow you to pause, rewind and replay live TV. And when you replay, you can skip straight back to the action. LG, that's good. Ricola Herb Drops are made in Switzerland with Swiss Alpine herbs. Naturally soothing and refreshing. And a great taste, naturally. Ricola. Need a hand with your business? Want to lower the cost of your repetitive work? Hands on SA specialise in training manuals, labelling, packaging, shrink wrapping, collating, collating, handouts, handouts, promotional packs, anything you don't have time for. We'll start as soon as you deliver. Phone us today. Hands on SA. It's amazing where life can take you when you don't have to worry about a thing back home. Avail, Australia's leading provider of retirement lifestyles. Live well. You think you've aged gracefully. She thinks you're letting yourself go. Do something. Men Expert Vitalift Complete Anti-Aging Moisturizer revitalizes and firms the appearance of the skin. Men Expert from L'Oreal Paris. Because you're worth it too. Mrs. Sanders, Mrs. Sanders, was your killing Demetrius James excusable? Oh, CSI Sunday. A ghost from the past. Well, you have no idea what you killed when you killed my brother. Cast doubt over a good cop's future. And this one's got to be seen to be believed. New season CSI and CSI Miami. You got him. CSI Sunday, tonight from 8.30. A teenager caught in a fiery crash after a high-speed joyride in Melbourne owes his life to the remarkable bravery of a nearby resident. The man risked his own life to free the boy from the wreckage and then drag him to safety. A teenager trapped inside the wreckage. And only minutes later... There's a fire! Everyone stand back! Everyone stand back, all right? A nightmare realised. The 17-year-old passenger owing his life to a local resident who risked his own to help pull him free. I think he felt so much, so much pain. He was screaming. I just have to just get him out of the car. Just quickly get him out of the car. And his feet was burning, I believe. Inexperienced youth driving uh, recklessly uh, in uh, suburban side streets. Four teenagers were in the car when it ran off the road, smashing into a fire hydrant and rolling into a tree. By the time fire crews arrived, flames were threatening to spread. Locals confirming there'd been no fatalities. Everyone out? The trapped boy suffered burns to his legs and cuts to his face. Another was taken to a nearby hospital. Colin McLean still can't believe they walked away virtually unscathed. Kind of lucky stories, I say. Very, very lucky people. They'll still be alive. Police are questioning the 17-year-old driver who is unlicensed and initially fled the scene of the accident. The reluctant hero hoping the close call will teach the youth a lesson. I don't speed. Please say. Please don't speed. I'm mad. Martin Alpin's National 9 News. More than 50 people have died and hundreds more have been wounded in a series of bombings across Iraq. In the most deadly attack, a suicide bomber drove a car filled with explosives into a crowded bus station in the holy city of Kabbalah. In Baghdad, 10 people were killed in the second bombing in just three days on one of the city's major bridges. Well, Britain's in a frenzy of speculation about the end of the romance between Prince William and Kate Middleton. While the palace won't comment, most agree that the split occurred because Kate felt that the prince wasn't paying her enough attention.
For Kate Middleton, it seems the fairy tale is over. Five years after she and William began their relationship, British newspapers say the couple has split. When they first met at university in those delightful days, away from any media attention, fast forward that on five years to today, and uh, in recent weeks, um, Kate's been lucky if she's even seen William once a week. As a junior army officer, the prince is based at a country barracks, while Kate was left in London to deal with the paparazzi. But it seems his recent preference for drinking with army colleagues on weekends instead of seeing his girlfriend had caused great strain. And this picture, snapped in a nightclub last month, didn't help. The palace has refused to confirm the split, saying it never comments on William's private life. But friends of both say it's true, adding that William had had enough of the growing pressure on him to marry, a move they say he's not yet ready to make with Kate or anyone else. Some royal watchers suggest the 25-year-old will be better off without the media attention, so often compared to the treatment William's mother endured. Either way, the second in line to the throne now reclaims the title of world's most eligible bachelor, while the British people go back to guessing just who their future queen might be. In London, James Talia, National 9 News. Mark's along with the Sunday Sport and only one unbeaten side left in the AFL. That's amazing. Yes, the West Coast Eagles mm -hmm. last year's Premier stand alone at the top of the ladder mm -hmm. after the weekend's round. Hi everyone, highlights from all the day's action ahead. Sport prepares for the next fortnight without two of its stars. And Manchester United have one hand on the FA Cup. Could you find the strength to stay alive in open water, surrounded by sharks? I'm gonna die! They live to tell their story. I shouldn't be alive. Tuesday, 9.35. They're right up there for looks and performance. And right now, when you upgrade to a Mazda, you upgrade to great value. Mazda 2 Neo with free upgrade to power windows and power mirrors, just $14,990. Or get a free upgrade to a Tribute V6 at a four-cylinder price from only $31,990. Upgrade to a Mazda. Great value at your Mazda dealer now. Need print and dime in a flash? Just get on the phone and call the rat. Business cards. 500 business cards, just $88. The printing hub, here's what to do. Just get on the phone and call and the rat. And check out our great prices, big fella. It's only a few k's over, wasn't it? Well, I have to go to the shop. It shuts in 10 minutes. The guy in front of me, he was going just as fast as I was. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm running late. I'm running late. I'm running late. Speeding. There's no excuse. Well, well, I was down at the pub. It was trivia night. We heard this discussion or argument. All right, it was a fight over some fact. Oh, you joke. You're joking. It turns out this clown was right. Yeah, well, the beast is a gonna. Oh, come on, mate, it wasn't me. I didn't bite him. Why would I bite him anyway? I've just eaten. I had a pie. Life's simpler with answers on your mobile. For a demonstration, visit Optus today. Yeah. Slider Shoes for Men. They've done it for 130 years. Great shoes, top value. Slatters, look for them. Buy style and you'll discover comfort. CSI New York. Murder's never simple. Time for revenge. New CSI New York, Monday, 9.35, after 1 versus 100. Welcome back. Port Adelaide's ruck stocks will be put to the test in the next two weeks, with scans revealing Dean Brogan will be sidelined with a severely sprained ankle. Rising star Daniel Pearce is also unlikely to return next week because of a hamstring strain. 
It looked ugly and many were expecting the worst, but x-rays on Dean Brogan's left ankle this morning confirmed there was no fracture. But the severe sprain will still sideline the informed ruckman for two weeks. The injury adding further pain to Port's showdown wash-up, with Daniel Pearce also to miss at least another week with a hamstring strain. The players blaming missed opportunities for the defeat. We went inside 50 more times than, than they did. Uh, we won the clearances. We got a lot of the things we wanted to do uh, worked. And it was just the, the finishing off. Um, it was mainly the goals on the run and the snaps. We kicked one goal eight and you know, those sort of things. If you, if you end up kicking five of those goals, you know, you're right in the game. And The power remains upbeat despite the loss, believing its third quarter fight back was a significant positive to take into Saturday's clash with Collingwood. We showed a lot in the second half. Uh, we came back from a position that we you know, could have very easily lost that sort of game by 10 goals, and it shows a lot of the, the character that the group's got this year. The Crows emerged from the showdown unscathed and expect Matthew Bode and Rob Shirley to be available for next week's home game against Sydney as expectations of another premiership assault begin to rise. We certainly didn't meet our expectations in round one, uh, so it's been good to, to um, you know, perform the way we the way we won in the last couple of weeks. Corey Norris, National 9 News. The Kangaroos and Hawthorne are currently locked in battle at the Telstra Dome. It's early in the third quarter with the Roos desperate for victory after dropping the first two games of the season. Daniel Wells got his side off to the perfect start with the first goal of the match before Jared Roughhead in for Trent Crowe slotted a brilliant goal through from a tight angle close to the boundary. Melbourne's season has sunk further into the mire. The Cats ran rampant to win by 52 points with second game of Tom Hawkins booting four goals. Jimmy Bartell had 35 touches and 10 marks. Nathan Ablett was a very late withdrawal, injured in the warm-up, but it was a former cat, Brent Maloney, who starred early for the Ds with two goals. To Maloney, who's thriving on the occasion and gives it a ride. It'll run away. It's all the way. But from there, it was all Geelong in the first half, highlighted by the brilliant Tom Hawkins. Who can now kick a goal. How about that one? The second gamer was unstoppable on the lead. Oh, this kid is smart too. By midway through the second term, he had all four of his first half goals. Another youngster, Travis Varco, helping the Cats to a 46-point lead at the main break. I don't think he touched it. The Cats booted another three goals to one in the third term, and it had turned into a gentle Sunday stroll. From about 55, killing kick. Geelong were quite literally flying. Terrific mark by Johnson. And by the final change, it opened up an unbeatable lead. Chris Moore likes it. He's got two. Now he's got three. The steam went out of the match in the final term. Bartell sealing the 52-point victory. Jimmy Bartell delivers. Chris Jones, National 9 News. And Sydney kicked the last six goals of the game to end Brisbane's unbeaten start to the season. The Swans strangled the life out of the Lions with no Brisbane player having more than 16 touches. It was a sensational opening quarter and a fitting start for O'Loughlin. Happy 250th, Mickey O. But from there, the big guns took over. It's Jonathan Brown for Brisbane for and Barry Hall Brown for Sydney. With his knee constantly Barry tested, Hall, Hall proved his fitness. He's got it. He has got it. Luckily for the Lions, Brown was dominating down the other end. It's a miracle goal. Instant reply. His strength just too great to contain. But it was the same with Hall. He easily brushed off Merritt on his way to a milestone. Goal number 500 for Barry Hall. When Brown wasn't kicking them, he was setting them up. This one for Begley, who put through his first AFL goal. But O'Keefe was able to keep Sydney in front at half-time. It was a tight contest in every aspect of the game. McGrath lucky to squeeze this one past the post. But the game finished as it began, in the hands of O'Loughlin. He added two more goals in the final term to give the Swans a hard-fought win. West Coast Michael Braun may be fined by the AFL after a slip-up following the Eagles' win over Fremantle. Braun's blunder came during an acceptance speech for Best on Ground. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank the fans, uh, sick and boys, for the rough times and uh, all the best to uh, all the boys and uh, let's have a good year. The Eagles inflicted Fremantle's third straight loss while Nick Revolt booted four as the Saints outclassed the Western Bulldogs by 50 points. So with just one game still in progress, the reigning Premiers are the last unbeaten team. Nine sides have two wins, including both the Crows and the Power, and at least three sides will go into the fourth round without a victory. In local football, Wooden Spoon favourite Sturt have made it two from two with a 26-point win over Glenelg. 
The Tigers led early but couldn't maintain their momentum. North cruised to a 12-goal win over West at Prospect, while Port Adelaide crushed the Premiers at Woodville by 52 points. Clive Waterhouse returned to the Magpies, filling the shoes of Warren Treadray. And like Treaders, the week before, booted seven goals in a commanding performance up forward. So Central, Port and Sturt all have two wins to start the season with. The Eagles and North both a game behind Nord, and Glenelg have played one and lost one. West and South are both none from two. Manchester United is through to the FA Cup final after a 4-1 win over Watford. The Red Devils await the winner of tonight's other semi-final between Blackburn and Chelsea. It was the Premiership's top versus bottom, and it took just seven minutes for Wayne Rooney to put Watford in its place. Hamo Buatza produced a spectacular equaliser to bring the Hornets back on terms, but the Red Devils couldn't be held. Goals to Ronaldo and a second to Rooney, ensuring their safe passage through to a third final in four years. In the Premiership, Sheffield United have condemned West Ham to the brink of relegation with a 3-0 thrashing at Bramall Lane. Michael Tonga's first half free kick decorated with two more second half strikes. Elsewhere, there were wins for Arsenal, Aston Villa, Portsmouth and Reading. Liverpool was held to a goalless draw at Manchester City. New Zealand has stunned South Africa with a five-wicket win in the World Cup that leaves the Proteus semi-final aspirations in doubt. The Black Caps held South Africa to just 193 on a slowish wicket. Scott Styrus and Craig McMillan knocking off the total. South Africa meets England on Tuesday with a loser in danger of missing the finals. And none of the three equal favourites managed to finish a dramatic Grand National at Aintree. 33 to 1 long shot Silver Birch holding off McKelvey in a thrilling finish over the four and a half miles. Dion Heyman, National 9 News. George, that's our sport, and I'm not even going to mention the showdown results. No, I know there. you're dying to, but <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, unbelievable Indian summer is showing no sign of letting up, and neither does Xavier. He's here with his Sunday night report coming up next. But first, of course, the speed cameras for you. of the speed camera locations on 5AA tomorrow morning. I put him down as one of the great newsreaders of Australia. Such a generous man in all respects. And the funniest person. I mean, he had the quickest wit. He set the benchmark for news reading in South Australia. That's tonight, 6.30 on 9. And that's National 9 News. Good night. Yeah, doing enough to win tonight. So far, so good for our champion. Monday, he faces his toughest challenge yet. Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm, or oh, you're on fire. High pressure temptation. Monday, 7 o'clock. Channel 9. Hi, babe. Got your message. I'll pick you up. See you soon. I got a girlfriend. She's so true. And no other kind of girl will do. But she'll always be good to me. Always be good to me. Always be good to me. With Australia's first five-year warranty with unlimited kilometres, there's no stopping the all-new Hyundai Elantra. Brad walks out on Ange and takes Shiloh. Gorgeous fix of Tori Spelling's baby boy. Courtney's marriage crisis over David's wild night. Terrorist threat, Prince Christian in danger. Plus, free two-week pass at Fernwood Women's Health Club. It's all in this week's Women's Day. It's my number one celebrity magazine. Women's Day. The lifestyle DVD-based home entertainment system from Bose. So intelligent that it adapts its performance to any environment, stores your CDs, learns your music preferences, responds to your mood, and controls music throughout your entire home. Expand the music you enjoy in up to 14 additional rooms, both indoors and out. Listen to what you want, where you want. It's time to expect more from home theatre. Blackwood Sound, the home of Bose in Adelaide. Remember the things we really love? Running under sprinklers and getting soaked. <laughs> Receiving mail, handwritten. <laughs> Catching tadpoles in a pond. Climbing a tree that's been there forever. 
What we love today, we want to love tomorrow. That's why at Origin we're working towards a sustainable future for all Australians. At Modern Form Furniture Warehouse, the word is now. Sleek, versatile, fresh, very now. If it's here, it's yours now. Take it home or we'll deliver it now. Modern Form Furniture Warehouse. Sanitarium are committed to helping every Aussie grow up healthy, happy and full of whole grain goodness. So we've asked Coles to bring you super specials on selected Sanitarium cereals. Hurry, this week only. Unmissable viewing. I'm not interested in coaching the Melbourne Footy Club, nor any other club. Did you yeah. really say that Essendon can finish top four this year? Yes. I think uh, is the number one player in the competition. Ooh. Footy Classified, Monday, 10.35. Channel 9. Good evening, folks. A pleasant week ahead, although you will have to have some patience for any sign of moisture. So far, temperature-wise, 22.3 this afternoon after 12.8 this morning. Currently in the city, 19.6. Mount Lofty with 11.9 degrees. Humidity at 57%. Having a look at the chart, the high moving out and down towards Mount Gambier. We've got a southwest to southeast airstream coming through. A bit of moisture on that, some early drizzle around the lower southeast. For the rest of the state, early fog from... Keith and Narracourt back through to Port Augusta. The rest of the state fine, although northerly is ahead of a southwesterly change in the far west. That might just slip away. We'll see how it goes for the rest of the week. As for other areas, it is wet in Darwin, Sydney, Melbourne and Perth. Maxima ranging from 16 in Hobart to 33 in Darwin and the Alice. Our forecast again quickly, morning fog through the agricultural areas, early drizzle about the lower southeast and the southwest to southeasterlies turning northerly out through the west ahead of a southwest change over the western coasts later. Strong wind warning, therefore, for the far west, west coast, south central and Neptune Island. Country temperatures, Sejuna looking for a top of 34, Clare down to 9 overnight, top of 27 with Murray Bridge at 28. Elsewhere in the state, 26 the top for Narracourt, Victor Harbour looking for 25. On the waters, east to northeast winds by morning at 10 knots, variable by the afternoon, easing back to 8 knots, seas very calm at half a metre and for the metropolitan area. It'll be fine, warm enough though, 28 for both Adelaide and Elizabeth Mount Barker, 8-ish overnight with a top of 26. No longer pleasant in both ways with 26 degrees. As the week ahead occurs, we do see it slightly warming up. Once the change moves through, we do see the temperature drop back slightly. A bit of cloud build up at this stage, no moisture in sight though, until maybe late Saturday into Sunday. Enjoy your week. Thank you, Dave, and our thanks to you for your company tonight. And stay with Nine Up for a very special presentation, a one-hour tribute to our much-loved Kevin Kreese. Good night.